it's a little bit tricky at first, but together I'll play it uh, after this A7 chord. I'm the drunken hearted man. I'm the drunken. I'm the drunken. I'm the drunken one. Tricky. I'm the drunken. You're you're sliding into this this half D chord, and and this is crucial to get this down because the next part he'll be playing is going to be this kind of strange way to play a D chord. I don't know exactly the full name of this chord, but it is a variation of D, which I have never really seen in other kinds of songs. But the way that it's played out comes across as this kind of very, it's like a very vibrant chord to uh, accompany me the rest of that verse. So when he slides into this lick, and this is what the chord is going to sound like. It's a D7. It's a real pretty chord. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be positioning. I like to start off with the pinky uh, fingering the, the bottom string, fifth fret. The uh, ring finger is going to be playing the uh, third string, fifth fret. The middle finger is going to be playing the. Uh, the middle finger is going to be playing the 4th uh, fret, 4th string, and the uh, index finger is going to be playing the 3rd fret, 2nd string. So you're, you're, it'll look like this. And this is a very, it's a very difficult chord to first learn because you don't learn this at all. This is a very unconventional way of playing a D7 chord. But this is very crucial in learning this song. You have to get this chord down and practice very hard on just just setting it up right away. Just picking up the guitar and playing it. Because it's going to to show up and appear throughout both songs in the interplay between licks, half chords, and so forth. This chord makes a big presence felt and you really feel that chord. So in this, now that we've got that chord in I'm going to show you how it all plays together. So when he does this, uh, I'm the drunken hearted man Again, real slow will be like this. I'm the drunken hearted man. And I'm playing that chord. So basically, when when you're going to be playing this chord, it's just going to be kind of five soft strokes. It could be five. It could be a little bit more, six, between four or six strokes. But you don't want to put a lot of Umph into it and emphasis. It's more of like this kind of, uh, you know, appropriate kind of capping off to this sharp lick that we first introduced the lyrics with. So it's like, I'm the drunken hearted man. about that 
particular chord. So when you do this lick, one, two, three. So when you go from this, you play this full chord once, and it's going to be basically like a, like a half note. And then you're going to play four quarter notes of the same chord, but you're going to be only striking the uh, bottom uh, bottom three strings, namely. Like. And notice what I'm doing with my down strokes, I'm going with the thumb, and the up strokes, I'm going with the index finger. One, two. chord so it's it's very tricky to get the timing of the voice and this uh, transition of this kind of licks into the chord and that's why I mentioned earlier is this interplay between going from this kind of lick to chord back to fragmentation and that's what makes the concepts of these songs. But that's why it's important for your learning abilities. So we'll go over this part really slowly, starting from that A7 shape. I'm the drunken hearted man. slow it's a little bit difficult to grasp but if you play it fast it'll be like this I'm the drunken heart of man now, I'm not gonna discuss too much on that but uh, you know that's important that we get that down that's the that's that one chord is the D7 I'm the drunken heart of man Play, you let that ring out a little bit, and then he's gonna go into a part that goes, My life seems so misery. And we'll go over that. And it comes after this. My life seems so misery. focus on that the my life seems so misery part and what he's doing here is now he's going to the four chord which will be the G and he's playing this half G chord basically two notes again and uh, and you you're basically going to pinch again your thumb is going to be over the third string and your index finger is going to be on the second string positioned here on the right hand and uh, your index finger is going to be on the uh, second string, uh, third fret. Your middle finger is going to be on the uh, third string, fourth fret. And you're going to pinch together like this on the right hand. But what you want to do is you want to start from the second and third fret, maintaining that same position. And, and basically pull into that, like a pull-on. See what I'm saying? And it's almost like in the same vein as what we did here. And 
that's what we're going to go over here. So you've got that position like this. Just pluck that a little bit. And it's basically going to come after this D7 chord that I talked about. Let me, let me again kind of go from that introduction, or uh, not the introduction, but the start of that first verse. I'm the drunken hearted man, my life seems so misery. And we'll go over that. So when you're in this uh, chord... Part when he goes my life, he's going to start on that second and third fret with that position. And when he goes my life, my life, my life, my life seems so misery. So again, transitioning from that chord. Again, it's imperative that you you make that pull on from the second and third fret to the third and fourth fret. My life seems so miserable, and you're gonna be staying on the uh, third and fourth fret with that position. So it'll be like this. My life seems so misery. My life. that a little bit better. So it'll be like this. My life seems so miserable. My life seems so misery. The way I have it laid out on the tablature is, you know, either way you can stay on this third and fourth fret or you can keep this kind of To you, but uh, we're gonna go even slower here. I'm gonna try to get this down because now the uh, there's gonna be one tiny note on the fifth fret bottom string that's gonna appear, and it's going to give this this uh, transitionary kind of this four chord. It's gonna give it a little bit of a dynamic touch to it, a little uh, little touch to this kind of transition and it will it'll go like this my life seems so misery that's how it all plays out so I guess for the purpose of this learning we'll keep this kind of trend uh, going from the second and third fret to the third and fourth fret so here we go from this my life will be look like this my life seems so misery my life seems so misery and uh, so he's going to play five notes in this going back and forth between the second and third and third and fourth fret. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. My life seems so. My life seems so. Again, five times. One, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, the right hand is 
is maintaining that position. So five notes. My life seems so misery. So five times here. One, two, three, four, five. And on the sixth, the sixth note, you're going to drop this pinky while you have this position on the third and fourth fret. The free pinky is going to just touch, dab this bottom string fifth fret and your index finger in the right hand is going to flick that up. And it will sound like this. And then he goes back to the uh, third and fourth fret. So after the, he plays this fifth fret bottom string, he'll play the third and fourth fret. So it'll be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Back to the third and fourth fret. And how it sounds with the lyrics will be like this. My life seems so miserable. And then you end that just by playing the open note on the fourth string open. So there's a lot going on here. So the the word misery in the song itself is is uh, you're playing a different note over each syllable of misery. So all together, you know, these seven notes would be like this. My life seems so misery. So this bottom string fifth fret mis, then third and fourth fret. And then you cap off this transitionary phase with the open uh, fourth string. Misery. My life seems so misery. And again, that's what's so uh, so imperative here. What I discussed earlier in the lesson is this in the right hand is going from these pinching click up pinch 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 and again you you should take this time to practice just going like this one two three four one two three four That's going to help you throughout this song. So I know it's a lot to uh, a lot to handle in this, and especially you're trying to sing over this. But once you get this rhythm, it, it actually becomes very simple. So uh, altogether from that opening phase will be like this. I, I'm the drunken hearted man. My life seems so misery. I'm the drunken hearted man. So again, those two opening concepts are crucial because they're going to appear throughout both songs. So you have to get uh, both of those rights. You got to master that D7 shape chord, and you also got to get this this discipline that that's being uh, performed in the right hand. <clears throat> so this is, in this part, my life seems so misery. 
seem so misery. What he's gonna do is he's gonna do this classic turnaround, which he utilizes in several some uh, several other of his songs, like Four Too Late and etc. And it's this what we uh, talked about earlier. This these these half chords that are based on the first and second fret, which are gonna show up all over the place in both songs. So. When he does this, uh, well, I'll play it out. My life seems so misery. This, it's this part. And basically what you're going to do is when he plays this open uh, string, my life seems so misery. sure that that open D string is going to be open. My life seems so misery. Now your right hand is going to hover down. Now there's several ways to play this with this turnaround leg. So basically you're going to position your index finger on the bottom string fifth fret. Your uh, ring finger is going to be on the seventh fret second string like this. Now you can either come down with your thumb and play over the second string and your index finger plays over the first string and you can do this play this simultaneously which I think how it appears in the song so he plays three notes of this on the fifth and seventh fret one two three then he switches over to the fourth and sixth fret maintaining the same position then to the third and fifth fret in the same position Now you can play like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> now there's there's just very several ways to play it. Be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. recordings he plays it kind of choppy like one two three am I playing it twice it could be twice or three times either way it's laid out for you in the tablature now you can do it like these brisk strokes like what you hear in the original one two three or even with the thumb you can do down strokes fast. You could play that like this or you can do this. Take your top string, you want to play this uh, top note and just with your index and middle finger do the same. Play it three times. One, two, three. You could do like a double stop which, which I don't, if you're really familiar with finger picking, this might help out. A little bit more of a complicated thing, but if you want to incorporate the, the accompanying top note, the bass note, you could do it like. And basically what you're doing is a double stop, then with your middle finger playing the second string, and then double stop again. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a, an optional way to play it. I tend to play it like that. That 
that's kind of nice, but in the original recording he just plays this. But in the either version as well, I highly recommend incorporating the top bass note to give it more of a dynamic pulse to it. But pay attention closely to this kinds of turnarounds because in both songs he's all over the neck board. And in this particular verse in both songs he does this, you know, simple turnaround from the uh from this D shape to the C. <clears throat> but in other songs he'll he'll go like You're going to notice, and we're going to cover all of these concepts in both songs, but he'll go from the 5th and 7th to the 8th and 10th. Or he'll go to the 1st and 3rd fret, and you'll hear it as you play along with the original LP, but for the purpose of this song, we'll just stick with that. But, but it's something to get down. So we've got this. One, one two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, or one, two, three, four, five, six. And when he's playing over this third and fifth fret, he resolves back into this D7 shape. And he plays a full downstroke from the top. And then you're going up and down. And you kind of sit on that chord. And it's like a soft chord that that brings you into the next transition. So from that that beginning lick, I'll I'll play it all from the beginning to make sense of it. I'll go like this. My life seems so misery. Now after this third and fret. You can play the top string open and jump into the chord or just go to the chord directly. Or well, I liked it when you, you just play the top of that string and then go into the chord. Or go directly to the chord. Either way. Again, in that chord I'm going one, two, one, two, one, two. Notice what I'm doing with the right hand. Down stroke, up, up. And uh, going back to this, there's also another variation with this kind of turnaround leg like this. You can end on the uh, second and third fret, which is basically a D, then go into this chord. So it'll be like this. That's optional. Either way, you're producing the same effect. D, D7. That is the second and third fret. Like... It could be like a natural tendency, but nonetheless, we've got this uh, we've got this lick down, and uh, it'll be like this. And we're strumming this chord. I'm the drunken-hearted man. My life. 